So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Aston Villa fans and welcome to my car for a post-match podcast for Aston Villa versus Wolves um, and Aston Villa 2, Wolves nil. An absolutely brilliant result, a brilliant result for our um, Champions League hopes and a brilliant result given what Spurs did when they jamily got a goal in the last minute against Luton, um, albeit that they did have all the running in that game uh, today. But uh, I love that game. I-, I love that game from Aston Villa today. Um, I know a lot of people will talk about maybe the first 25 minutes, the first half an hour and so on. I think there was one stage Sky Sports threw up that they had a, um, that the Spur, or the Wolves had a 74%, I think, of possession. Villa only had 26%. And the commentators were, I suppose, rightly to be a small bit um, surprised with regards to that. But uh, personally, I thought that this game was... Um, was well worked by Una Emery. I thought that he managed this game well. I thought that he managed the substitutions really, really well. We'll get onto that in a moment as well. But I think that he managed the initial Sp- uh, Wolves. And apologies if I keep calling them Spurs. I've just been talking to a lad about Spurs, and he's been telling me about that Spurs are like ninety-five million times better than Villa, and Villa are fluky to be where they are. And uh, so I've got a bit of Spurs on the brain at the moment. But, um. I think Villa managed this game really well. They managed the first first 20 minutes, 25 minutes well um, from a Wolves point of view. Yes, did we get an awful lot going in that period of time? No, I don't think so. But um, I think that um, I think we got our shape right. I think we didn't allow Wolves to do too much. They had that Saravia chance at the back post. At the, um, I think it was the back post. Um, we also had the ball in the back of the net during that period of time as well. It was ruled offside, which it was a correct offside. So I think Villa were kind of playing a bit of cat and mouse with Wolves uh, a good bit in the first half. Um, and then we got the goal. And the goal was an absolute cracker from uh, Moussa Diaby. Really well-worked goal. Um, obviously, he puts his laces through it and sticks it in the back of the net. And I thought, like, obviously, when we got the goal, I thought I thought we might we were looking at to go in... Probably if the right was right, we would have got in 2-1 up, I think, at halftime. But I think we would have been by far the, the happier team, regardless, even if we had gone in at nil-nil. Um, because I think what we were doing was correct. Um, and then the second half, there was substitutions. There was obviously a substitution at halftime. John Duran. Um, I'm just looking at here. The Athletic, there's a piece popped up here. It says, Aston Villa have the best record in the league when we take a lead in any game. And today it was no different. Going 1-0 up, well, I felt we were never going to lose this game. I didn't even feel we were going to draw this game uh, after we went 1-0 up. I, I felt supremely confident because I saw I thought that the team really galvanised themselves uh, an awful lot. I thought uh, Diego Carlos was really good. I thought Tom Pau Torres was really, really assured at the back there as well. But we made substitutions at halftime. Ali Watkins comes off. Anybody know where? Anybody know the situation with Watkins? My initial thoughts are, Unai Emery recently has had this penchant for just giving people 45 minutes. And I have a funny feeling that, I have a funny feeling that today was one of those games for Ali Watkins where he just got, where Unai Emery just gave him 45 minutes to, um, because of, uh, to manage his workload. Now I could be wrong. I don't know if somebody knows any different, has seen anything on Twitter, has heard anything um, from, has heard anything from, from Villa Park? I don't know. And Alex B says there, he had a tight hamstring. Yeah, at Sky Sports, they were they were speculating that was the situation. But, yeah, um, John Duran comes on. I think there was a statistic came up, said he had no touches after being on for like 10 minutes. But did his normal thing, was massive chaos. And it was a big reason why the ball goes in at the back post for um, for Ezri Kanza for our second goal. Um, so... I think Gunnar Emery was really spot on in this game. I think, look, there's, there's, there's a couple of people have mentioned, you know, setups from Unai Emery um, that maybe have not been correct to start the game. I think today he managed this game absolutely brilliantly. I think he was the better manager on the, on the day. 
I feel sorry for, in a small bit for Gary O'Neill. I know a lot of people will not feel sorry for him. Uh, I don't feel sorry for him against us, but I feel sorry for him in particular at the moment. The league seems to be struggling with huge amounts of injuries. Like lots of teams seem to be struggling with huge amount of in- injuries, and I don't know how to solve it. And I don't don't think the league knows how to solve it. A lot of professional sports in general are struggling with huge amount of injuries at the moment. Um, and I think there's probably going to have to be some sort of recalibration on overworking of players. Uh, 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 what's it? Um, uh, what's the word? CBA stuff like a bargaining agreements and stuff like that. Whether the the players' union get together or something like that, I don't know. Um, because we've had our fair share of injuries, albeit ours have been career uh, have been season. Jesus, I hope they're not career ending. They've been season ending and in the the ACL types and, and we've had long hamstring injuries and so on. But a lot of other teams are getting massive amount of niggles through the year. Now let them get injuries as I say it, it helps us. But I suppose from an overall standpoint of the game itself, I think it's probably something that has to be looked at. Like Gary O'Neill today has to the only two fit strikers he has are two 18 year olds. And you know when you talk about the Premier League being the best league in the in the world, those two strikers, Nathan Fraser has a shot Against the against the the side netting at the very end, and the guy who started didn't really do a whole point, you know. So Wolves were kind of playing an awful lot with their with their hand tied by their back behind their back in a lot of ways, um, specifically going forward. Now I don't care. We needed to beat beat Wolves and beat Wolves. We did. So my so as I say, like from from I'm talking more about an overall standpoint of probably professional sport in general. But uh, definitely the Premier League at the moment, the amount of injuries that are going on. Um, but it was nice for us to see the setup that we had and the fact that we could take players off and hopefully um, Ollie Watkins isn't too badly injured. We've got Tuesday coming up. We've got a big game then against Brentford, which I really hope that's the three points we really need to target. And then I personally think we need five points towards the end of the season then to get uh, to get at least fifth place. Um, but going back to this game, and I know this is going to be a really short one, guys. This, I, I, I'm not going to stay very long because I don't know how long my internet is going to last. But um, going back to this game, um, a couple of couple of really good performances, I thought, uh, from Aston Villa here. Uh, a couple of really good performances from Wolves, which I'll talk about as well because I think I think it's fair to talk about that too. But I think Villa's um, I think two real un, unsung heroes for Aston Villa today were. Uh, where um, Yuri Tielemans, I think, won't get the credit that he deserves today. I thought Tielemans was absolutely excellent in midfield. I thought a couple of passes that he made to people who didn't make the most of them, one being Ali Watkins, when Watkins fired very high, wide and handsome in the first half. Like, like just a really poor finish from him. Uh, he had to work the goalkeeper there. You have to go low and across the goalkeeper there. I don't know what he was thinking about going for uh, high end. And he took the shot with his left foot. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering, was that part, of, oh, as my light goes out here, I'm wondering was that part of maybe the issue that he had, and um, but I think Yuri Tielemans was really really good today. Also, um, this guy isn't an unsung hero because he ended up getting a goal, but I thought Ezri Kanza was superb in every facet of the play. He was superb in defence. He was superb going forward as well when he was needed. But neither of the two of them would be my man of the match. And I think the the comms team got it absolutely spot on. I think they got absolutely spot on today with Moussa Diaby being man of the match. I thought he stretched the play brilliantly. I thought he was perfectly positioned in that half space uh, at every single time to take that ball, to pull one of the three centre halves with him. And I just thought the day was a day where he brought his toys and just went and played in the sandbox. I thought he was absolutely brilliant today. And his goal, not just his goal, but I think his all-around all play when like he's not going to be this player that is going to grab the game by the scruff of the neck, but he's going to be this player that when you get him into the spaces and when he's in those spaces, and he might only get thirty touches a game uh, of meaning of note, but when he does, he's going to turn a player. He's going to draw players towards him. Morgan Rogers was the same on the other side, and I think that was the nice synergy between the two guys there as well. Morgan Rogers on the other side, obviously, bit, um, not discount, di- di- discounting Bailey's great efforts as well today, but I think the three of them worked. A lot of people, and you're dead right to t- to say this uh, uh, in a lot of ways about Mar- Morgan Rogers knows needs to know when to let the ball go. My counter, not so much counter argument to this, but 
like the amount of players that get drawn towards somebody of Morgan Rogers' stature. This, uh, what I mean by the stature, like a six foot one guy carrying the ball from the wing into the middle of midfield, is that's that that in a way is golden for teams on the counter attack. It's absolutely golden. We saw it at one stage there when um, we saw it at one stage there when uh, it Nuri pulls him back. Referee waves play on. Sarabia then drags him back and one yellow card was given. That should have been two yellow cards anyway. That's number one. But the amount of players that he sucks in. Yes, should he get rid of the ball a small bit quicker? Yes, absolutely. He's 21 years of age. He's making a step up into the into the perceived best league in the world. And I think that will come. But that carrying ability and the fact that he it's, it's no coincidence that he carries from wide in central to drag as many players to him because we like that bombing left, cent- left fullback. While Moreno, I thought, wasn't great again today, but he not, not that he wasn't great. He wasn't poor either, but I think at times, you know, they were, they, Semedo was looking to have a go at him as often as he could. And by Rogers being able to come in midfield and let that runner go on the right on the left hand side, I think that was very beneficial to Aston Villa. Um, and fair play to Morgan Rogers. I think he deserves a lot of plaudits. And if we if he is the player for the rest of the season where we get um maybe sixty good minutes out of him and bring on the chaos agent number two, part of the Chaos Brothers is Ronan Ward, one of my mates calls him, uh, with John Duran, brings on Zaniola and Zaniola has performances like he did today. Well then fair play to Unai Emery, he's got two players humming. And in positions that we need, with Jacob Ramsey also on the mending table as well. So there's a lot to be excited about on that left-hand side. It may not look very pretty at times from Morgan Rogers, but I'm 100%, 100% of the opinion that when you look back, if you were to look back at just his touches in this game today, he's been told to carry that ball, specifically against a a five-man midfield, if you want to call it, with their, when they play three at the back. He's been told to carry that ball in I'm just seeing here the, the Premier League app man of the matches Emiliano Martinez for today's game. A beggar's belief, but um, Rogers is told to carry it inside so that he's able to try and break the line of midfield players. I'm 100 percent convinced that's the exact tactic that he's, he was used today. Now, could he let it go a small bit quicker? Absolutely, and that will come with time. And and I'm really I was really impressed with him today. I was really impressed with his with his. He's upright running with his stature when he was being hit when he had the ball. There was times when it was like rugby uh, for him today, but he just got on with it and he seems to play with a smile on his face. And he seems to be a great character around the place too. Um, Yeah, Wolves players today, that, that Gomez land midfield, I know he got his, uh, his, his debut for, for Brazil. I thought he was really good. I like their midfield tree in general. I like Tommy Doyle, really like Tommy Doyle too. Um. I'm I was sniffing around or trying to scratch around to see if he had any Irish heritage. I'm sure he does with a surname like that, but alas, it seems that he isn't Irish qualified because I'd really like to see him in our midfield. And there, that are the other um, midfielder they have, Lamina. I'm I'm on record as saying I'm a I'm a fan of his as well. But I think Wolves were really hamstrung today by striking options that just didn't have them. Sarabia had a lot of work to do. He ran out of steam at times. And, you know, it was up to their fullbacks then to get into the game. And I think we really locked down their fullbacks as the game went on as well. So, fair play. I think this one really, we like a couple of people have said to me recently, and they've said in comments before, you know, this draws on Unai Emery or this losses on Unai Emery because of his selection. I think you, I think a lot of people should come away with the with the feeling today that this win is on Unai Emery today because I think his substitutions were fantastic. I think his setup was fantastic, and uh, I I think you know we've gotten that three points today at home, which is absolutely massive, um, as well. Uh, I'm going to try and <clears throat> I'm going to try and play and and share some comments here. I do apologize when I'm on the phone. And in the middle of nowhere, it's very, very difficult. Um, Ujin, Ujin Singh says, did the Abbey and Bailey linked up really well again? Great, great, great chemistry. Absolutely. Really enjoyed that, the two of them as well. A lot of you guys saying tight hamstring um, for that. Jordi Villain says, Roger's looking better, but he does need to defend more. He left Moreno exposed repeatedly. Um, I'm going to say I thought Moreno's positioning today was about five five yards he was five yards higher than he normally is today but then again i'll have to watch that back and i just thought that i thought Semedo was just a better fullback than, than moreno today but you do have a point there jordy villain maybe it is maybe rogers coming inside does leave him too exposed i think i'll have to watch that one back as well for sure 
100 percent um but, 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 but helen says important clean sheet today diaby coming back into form again and zaniolo zaniolo tracking back um for more now um far more now which is great to see lots of positives up the villa yeah i'm going to talk about zaniolo zaniolo came on today and played with his hair on fire and i love that about him today he played with real passion there was an absolutely excellent interception he had in the edge of our box when the ball dropped to one of their players who the name is escaping. I think it might have been Lamina. And Zaniola just gets in in front of him, tips the ball away from him, carries on his run and passes it off. And, you know, you'd expect that from a Douglas Luiz. You'd expect that from a Buba Kamara. You'd expect that from a John McGinn. Maybe you might even expect it from a Tielemans. But I did not expect that from a, from a Nicolas Zaniola. Not a hope in hell. And I was, like, thinking to myself, if this guy has 10 good games in him between now and the end of the season and we're going to see his 10 best games for Aston Villa... I will applaud his name for every single second of those minute, those games. Not that I've, I wouldn't applaud it anyway, but if he comes to form now for those last 10 games and does it down the stretch in the business minutes of this league and of this, of this Europa Conference League, well, then fair play to him. He's a man of savage character. He's a man of great um, integrity as well to do it for an Aston Villa team whereby he probably won't be around next year, but wants to play himself into into some good form of fortune and and i just thought he was really good today and he was in looking for a goal himself as well um in the end um a couple of you guys saying there that you play zaniolo over um over rogers uh, i'm i'm okay with zaniolo having that bailey role that previous bailey role of coming off the bench i think we i think he's probably better than that the well end valley says love diego in the center um I thought Diego Carlos was really good today. There was another; he had a brilliant uh, block at the back post, um, as well. And I thought I thought he looked fit again for the first time in a long time today, and uh, it was really nice to see. And he justified his start over Clement Longley as well. Something I thought was coming, um, but uh, yeah, very good from him as well. Nick McMahon says, Nick, thank you so much as well. Nick has booked tickets for our live podcast on the nineteenth of April. Can't wait. Great time to be alive. We're looking forward to everybody who is coming to that as well. Tickets are still available on yapsody.com. You can type in Y-A-P-S-O-D-Y and then for the love of Paul McGrath and you'll be able to find tickets for it there. It's on the Aston Social at, uh, I think it's half seven on the, on the 19th of April. If anybody's around, we'd love to see you there as well. So I'm going to leave you guys. Oh, whoa, whoa watch that. Cheers from Winnipeg. Brilliant. Winnipeg Walter. What a super. Although, Winnipeg Walter, that Bengals avatar. A big Browns fan here, so uh, we might have to have a little wor- a few words over that. But thank you so much for coming along. I do appreciate you. I'm only joking. We'll leave our NFL rivalries aside. Aston Villa fans are brothers. And uh, we certainly, uh, you're certainly more than welcome here. Whether you be in Winnipeg or whether you be in Antarctica or whether you be in West Limerick you're welcome here in this podcast regardless of who you are and we would love to have you and for and also on that note thank you to the 282 of you guys who are watching this as well I really appreciate everybody's time as my light kicks off that could be oh that could be my um my my cue to go and I am going to go I'm going to come back on one Monday once I hit dry land again and uh we'll have Paddy with us I'd like to get his feelings in that game um, but thank you so much, everybody, for your time. I really appreciate it. Aston Villa 2, Wolves nil. Aston Villa back in fourth place with that three-point buffer, albeit that Spurs have a game in hand. I'm going to go inside and watch Manchester United versus Brentford now and hope for a Brentford win, and I hope you all do too. But in the meantime, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, and all that's left to say is up the Villa. <laughs>